Welcome to Kicking Kickstarter with me, Jekylls. I am here with Ash Manif to talk about the game company Grim Bros and their Kickstarter project Dragonfin Soup. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hi. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure to have Excited you. Excited to be here. Yep. Yeah, uh, my, my pleasure. I've been in the industry for a really long time, and so is my partner. Uh, me around, I guess, 15 years, my partner 18. And in that time, we worked on all sorts of great projects, uh, big and small. Uh, and, you know, we we decided to form Grim Bros because we really wanted to make the games that we grew up playing. You know, we, we had a really strong nostalgia for it. You know, uh, games like, you know, Chocobo Dungeon, Sheer in the Wonder, Earthbound, Landstalker, Chrono Trigger. These were these are games that really inspired us to get into the game industry. And so we're like, you know, if we're going to make our own game, we're not going to chase some business model or do something, uh, you know, that we think will just make lots of money. We're going to do something that we just really want to play, something like we really love. And so we're like, okay, well, what, what do we love? And, um, you know, we, we both grew up reading a lot of fiction, fairy tales. We're so like, oh, okay, that's that's perfect. Fairy tales and like the real ones, you know, the grim, grim fairy tales. If you yeah. ever read them, they're really dark. They're, there's some really messed up stuff going on there. Yeah, and it was it wasn't a like, kiss that amazing. woke up why, Sleeping Beauty. Why isn't anyone talking about this? It's <laughs> epic, right? Yeah. Um, and so obviously we don't want to tell those stories flat. We don't want to be like, oh, here's this story just just recycled, you know, straight from Wikipedia. We wanted to take that as inspiration and do something new, do something different. And so um, that's how we came up with the name Grim Bros. And with Dragon Pit Soup, you know, it's our first title. Uh, you know, it's, we're 100% indie, so it's all self-funded with the support of our uh, amazing friends and family. And so we we said, okay, wh- what kind of game can we make? You know, with with our talent, experience, and, and our time and budget that we that we can afford. And so we th- we thought, all right, you know, we're gonna we're gonna take little pieces of, of the favorite kind of genres we like because we want to make all. We want to make RPGs, all flavors, turn-based, tactical, story-based, real-time, action, you know, we, we're just we're just totally, totally crazy about that. And so we started out with the roguelike. We said, well, we love roguelikes. What would happen if we made it more modern, more accessible, but still can true to the core of a roguelike? And they said, well, what are other elements we like? Well, we like tactical elements, right? Like being able to do backstabs, distract, dodges, have another guy tank for you. And we like uh, elements from Zelda. The puzzle solving, the, you know, the bricks, the colorfulness. And so we just started adding all these little pieces in it, hence it kind of came like a soup, right? Since Dragon Fin Soup, that's how we came up with the name. Uh-huh. And e- even more so than that, we got these characters that are inspired by fairy tales. So we got uh, Red Robin, who's inspired by Little Red Riding Hood. And she, in our game, she's this raging alcoholic with a shotgun, right? We think that's awesome. You know, flawed, flawed characters are super, super cool in our opinion. Yeah, that's so better than the normal the run of the mill. characters in our game. Yeah, it, it, but there's depth there too. She's just not a shallow character, you know. There, there's a reason. As mm-hmm. you start playing the game, you start uh, learning that there was a tragic event in her life, and the reason she drinks is to kind of repress subconsciously that memory, right? All right. Um, yeah, yeah. And then our next character, like I mentioned, is um, inspired by Mor- Morgiana from the fairy tale Ollie Bob where we're being thieves. And her. her, her you know, just to share a little bit of her backstory, you know, she's she's a slave who was trained as a dancer and assassin. So if you think about it, she seduces her enemies and then you know kills them, right? And so we have all these great ideas that we really want to share with, with 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 people and get their feedback and, and and bring them to life. And so the Kickstarter has been just this phenomenal experience. You know, the comments we're getting, the feedback, it's it's just been super positive. It's because we were worried, <laughs> we were really worried. We don't, we don't know how to market ourselves. Uh, we know how to make games. We have no idea, uh, you know. But we thought it was a cool idea. But you know, we weren't sure if everyone else did. And, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's been a very positive experience. We we blasted through green light, got into the top twenty before we were turnkeyed in, and then um, and yeah, we hit our, our our additional funding goal, and we still have two weeks left. Uh, so we're just we just feel very blessed and, and excited. Yeah, I can, I can imagine because you asked for twenty four thousand and you hit twice as much as that at the moment. So that must have been a yeah a lovely shock to the system. Yeah, we, yeah we're going to introduce a new game mode, uh, an endless, uh, what we call endless labyrinth. So you know, there's there's survival mode which you explore all of the wilds of Asher, and you can actually beat survival mode. It's extremely hard. That is a hard, true roguelike mode. So it's, yeah. you die, you're dead. Okay. You start out, you just got a little bit of money, some supplies, and you just got to make it happen. 
Um, Labyrinth mode, it's going to be, there's going to be twists on it. So we'll, we'll, we'll announce that later on. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And then, um, and then, yeah. And then, uh, so we're, we're, we're super excited. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That's right. And talk us through the actual gameplay. So we actually released um, a couple of uh, animated GIFs on our Kickstarter website that you can guys check out. And, uh, you know, you can see that uh, the game is turn-based, so when you move, the game moves. But what we did was we implemented what we think are very super fluid controls. So you can have a mix and match. We're not trying to control you. All the controls are live up once. So we support touch, mouse, keyboard, joystick. And so basically, on any device, you can do a combination of using the keys, using the mouse, actually touching the screen, touch, touch, you know, just whatever you, you think that feels good and, and how you want to interact with the game. And the UI responds very well to that. And so uh, with the controls, you can just zip right through the game and it feels just like, you know, it's almost as fluid as you're playing Zelda, or you can just stop and, and take an assessment of the situation. It's really nice. You can zoom in and out. Um, and so uh, with the gameplay, we're gonna have over at least over 30 different kind of levels at, at this time, and we're working on building more. Uh, we're planning to have hopefully, you know, uh, we have over 50 monsters, and we're hoping to get over to 100. And each of the monsters is gonna have distinct UI and abilities. Um, there's gonna be random missions that you can play. You pick them up at the bar because you know, you know you want enough money so you can do stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and the random missions are going to be nice and fun, procedurally generated. And then we're going to have story missions. And that's what really advances the character. That really, it really goes into it. And, uh, you know, for the second by second gameplay, it's, it's like I said, it's a little bit of a hybrid experience. It's, it's fairly unique. It plays like a roguelike, but uh, there's going to be elements to it. Like you can put, you can put your pet uh, to attack an enemy or use it to distract. And then you can come up from behind, do a backstab, do double damage. Right? Yeah. You can do things like that. You can hire NPCs um, and basically use them as fodder. You know, like, all right, bye, you know, go take the monster. And then you go get the chest and you can just leave, right? So, um, and we try to have a little bit of humor in it, you know, a little dark humor. Uh, we, you know, we don't, we're not trying to be serious. Uh, the story is a classic fairy tale, you know, with a couple twists. Uh, you know, we, 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 yeah, so hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. I, I will be rambling a little bit because... <laughs> yeah. Um, too much sleep nowadays. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the inspiration behind the art behind it, because it's st it's very dark game, but the art and the characters itself are still, I don't know, very warm and kind of cartoony Thank looking you. rather Thank you. than. Yeah, that's uh, you know all credit goes to my my, my partner Randis. Randis is um, you know a great friend and partner of mine, and he does all the art for the game. Every single piece of UI all the in-game art, all the, the portraits and paintings that you see, the loading screens, the story screens, just, just all one guy. Plus, on top of that, he you know he takes lead on development. Uh, I take lead on business development, but he takes lead on game development. And, you know, this you know, comes up with most of the design. We collab at a very, very high level, but all the low-level details is my partner. And um, with the character and the world and the colorfulness, you know, that's something that we were... We looked at very carefully when, because when, when, again, we started with what could we do with a roguelike, and how could we make it a more modern, more engaging experience. And you know, adding graphics, making it really colorful and engaging was, you know, really our first goal. And uh, you, you can even tell from the camera, it has that kind of super NES old school console kind of kind of look to it. And you know, the you know the reason that for that graphic and style is one with the engine. And you know, and our, and our ability, you know, with Randis being such a great artist, we knew this was a space that we could really put a lot of effort and polish into, and really make it shine. Because with three D, if you go into three D, um, it takes a lot more time to make it look good. You have to then suddenly wrestle with lighting um, and all these other different effects. But we, we have this three D to two D sprite pipeline, and that allows us to really make a beautiful, beautiful, rich world. Um, and we wanted something that, because this is a game we want you to play for hours. It's not, it's not a little app. It's a full-on RPG as much as we can make it. And so, oh, you know, we, we want the art to always be interesting and highly detailed. To see little little nuances here and there you've never quite seen before. And, uh, you know, just something that you can really fall in love with. That definitely does. This is my partner, Randis. He is the one-man army I was telling you about. Yes. Um, so, 
you can you can actually answer some of your questions if you want to just do a quick pickup. Well, yeah, we we were just talking about the um, the inspiration behind the artwork and how you came about designing the con the look and concept and feel for the uh, game and the characters. Oh, yeah, this, this is a tough one. Well, I've been at it for, for all my life, so um, my main inspiration source or uh, the main source uh, for my ideas is um, I draw for my personal, um, you know, creations, my personal taste. Um, um, I, I have a, a strong routine, so when, when, um, when I design something, I, I usually don't sit down and think about, like, um, what should I design, what do people like. I, I usually simply trust in my um, you know, in, in, in my um, own intuition yeah. and create something I personally enjoy. So uh, for me it's very important to, um, to create and paint things that I like personally, stuff that I can stand behind. Even if it's maybe not um, painted or designed in a way that, that I know is um, not, you know, uh, not maximized uh, that does, does not maximize uh, public popularity, mm. if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I, I'm not designing something be liked by others. I just design something with the priority uh, to to be liked by myself and of course my partner. So um, even though I'm the one who's painting it, um, we are still like on the same page. You know where we want to go. We, we brainstorm. We, we take our time to um, to talk about the works, uh, uh, to this world. To, uh, we created over a couple of drinks. You know yeah. and. Um, sort of share vision you know and then I, I, I design the things to to um, to envision to, to visualize our idea right yeah dog yeah it's um, the concept and the, like the game concept itself and the artwork definitely comes together to create a perfect perfect um, game I uh, you must have like I said had fun creating the monsters and decapitating the fairy tales because we were just talking about yeah, the um, different absolutely. types of fairy this, tales this is definitely the right password i mean this it's, it's really just about fun you know we, we, we did not try to um, reinvent the wheel here you know so it, uh, the space turtle for example is based on a real mythology that is um, that you have in many countries throughout the world i mean this is what Really, people used to uh, believe back then that our world is flat and uh, on a turtle that is carried by four elephants and stuff like that. And we thought, well, hey, why not? You know, um, why not? This is this is exciting. This is interesting. You know, we, we tried to be a bit playful without, uh, you know, but we, we did not exactly reinvent every anything. You know, the monsters, the monsters are um, not like exactly unique creatures, but uh, that was really not the goal behind it because um, fairy tales are never about. Um, Making up new things. Fairy tales mm. consist mainly of legends, of mysteries, of stories, and people need to be able to relate to them, right? So um, that's that's why um, we, we feature uh, familiar characters. We have witches, we have trolls, gnomes, and orcs. That's, those are all creatures that are known to everyone. And um, all we do is uh, just tell a story from our own angle, and uh, we just. You know, um, which is uh, uh, this, this is basically our hook. You know, this is what we are going for. Because um, since those uh, things are immersed, we, we, people only know what they hear about. But who knows? Maybe the hero wasn't the hero. You know, maybe the bad guy wasn't the bad guy. Mm -hmm. so we were trying to explore it. You know, and um, um, make, uh, make, uh, create our own twist on it, our own take. Yes. Yeah. It's, it is a good take on it. I, I do like looking at the. Um, the gameplay footage that you do have on your Kickstarter campaign and it must be um, brilliant to actually see your artwork come to life as the game as the game development progresses further and further especially now with the Kickstarter campaign um, yes yes and no at the same time um, <laughs> but, um, it, it, it is fun to see your artwork come to life and to have to have your games put into, you know, put your, to see your ideas, in, in, you know, in life and to play it. But on the same time, uh, it's very important to stay critical. So we cannot marry the, the things we, we create. We have to be critical and look at it. And, you know, I, every week I, I, I start the game and whenever I see um, the content, I tell myself, 
hey, you could maybe make it better, you know? <laughs> Is this good enough? Mm. You know? Um, and, and then uh, whenever I have the chance and the time, I try to change the assets. So the game evolved in many, many stages. It didn't look like this before. And it, 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 well, it started out super crappy, and now it is a lot less crappy because the game <laughs> keeps evolving. Of course, I mean, um, what, what is beauty? I think this is very subjective. Uh, 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 we don't deny we are proud with what we have, especially with the little resources we have. Mm. So I think the game looks, looks decent for an indie title. But we have no illusion that it's, uh, you know, comp- it cannot compete with a huge AAA title that, that really they look like, you know, ultra amazing and have those um, high-end shaders and whatnot. Mm. We don't have that. So um, we, we, we don't try that. So we, we just go for charming, you know. We try to, um, you know, um, clean out our own corner and build our own little thing there and um, just, you know, do what we do to keep it. Of course, it's it's not as so many other games. You know, you cannot compare it to a game like Final Fantasy IV and other games. Yeah, I've seen you before. You know, and this is our is our own one man army. So mm-hmm. he's doing all the art you see in the game, uh, leading the development. Uh, you know, taking point on design. Uh, he's you know sound effects. I think he's yeah. even in the game singing somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We, we have so many tasks, we are just five guys, and, um, and this is also one of the reasons why I'm really critical with my work, because a lot of this stuff I could do a lot better, but usually when I was a freelance, I, I, I people, you know, clients give me um, uh, uh, a lot of money and expect uh, results for it, and I get time to paint a single picture, I can sit there and paint for two weeks on a picture while others direct it and give me great input, but here, here uh, we just have no time for anything. You know, mm. I have to allocate time to make sound effects. I have to do all kinds of work um, an artist doesn't necessarily enjoy. You know, I would be, I would love just to sit around and paint pictures all day. But I also have to make all kind of little sprites and uh, icons and and whatnot. And I and, and and there is a constant deadline. I have to make it quick. I have to, and, and, and it still has to be good and satisfying. But this is this is um, the toughest part as as in the, you know if you have to do um, all this stuff by yourself. And it's very dangerous to go down the soap where you, you know, uh, start trying to find excuses for yourself. Like, hey, this is good enough. Let's move on to the next thing. And this is good enough, you know, because it's never good enough. Mm. Yeah. Well, it do- it does look very impressive. It's a very charming game, but it's one of those games that if someone else is playing it, you wouldn't mind just sitting down next to them and just watching what they're doing. We have a we have some things that are coming online that you're going to see soon. Um, uh, one of them is uh, we have this kind of we try to make the game humorous. Mm-hmm. So not only is the story missions and some of the, the talk you have with NPC, but we have this this system we're putting together right you know it's random, but you know we're gonna we're gonna see what, what we can do with it. Where it's I guess we're called the smack talk system where monsters will say smack talk to you to taunt you and whatnot, and you you reply to it. So mm. we're hoping that we could have enough time to make it something like this. It's, it's almost like banter. They're making fun of each other. So yeah. Um, so you'll see you'll see a little bit of that in the video where people are talking to each other and making comments. So this is this is this is above. Uh, this is in addition to the story, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's still um, a lot way to go once the Kickstarter campaign's ended because it seems like you've got so many uh, ideas to evolve the game further. Yeah, totally. Uh, there is still uh, a lot uh, of stuff on our list. So of course we prioritize things. So um, because we cannot realize every idea we have, we will do um, whatever we can to get as much of it as in as possible. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Our hope is people like it and that you know they like it enough that we can start making uh, some really great uh, DLC and, and uh, really really evolve this world and this space in the game. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, same here. It's uh, such a critical term. So uh, we, our game is not um, it's not based on a like a DLC model. So we, we, we don't feature like MTX, uh, microtransactions, uh, or DLC or downloadable content like you buy new weapons or stuff like that. But uh, we uh, we would like to uh, provide like support for the game mm. and, and add new new content. 
like new ideas. Yeah, the expansion packs, really. Better yeah. Broad, yeah, the expansion, it's, expansions is a much, much better term for it than DLC, because DLC implies always some small content for a lot of money, you know, so we're not gonna sell hats for one dollar. So um, if you have a uh, um, downloadable content, then it will be um, like, uh, uh, it, 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 you will get a uh, bang for your buck, you know, we will add monsters, dungeons, more story missions and all kind of stuff like that. Yeah, just ex just expansions onto the world. How the game is. Yeah, yeah, right. Just you know, slowly would love to expand and uh, you know, um, and, and and add more content to the game, especially for those who enjoy the game. You want to release it on multiple platforms. What yes. platforms are you hoping to release it in? First of all, and then yeah, do you hope uh, to extend on to? Yeah, that's the evil master plan, right? Um, we, you know, we want to get this out there, uh, share with as many people as possible. So we're because we're indie, you know, the and, and uh, you know we're getting a lot of great support from our friends, family, and, and, and the Kickstarter. We really want to take our time to do this right. So we're going to really focus on uh, uh, one platform release at a time. And, and just so that we mean, we're only a five man team, right? So we really want to make sure that every release is solid and, and really good, solid release, and anything, any improvements, we, we keep updating uh, the previous versions. So um, we haven't announced yet which two SKUs we're launching first, but the game's coming out to PC, Mac, Linux, PS3, PS4, PS Vita, iOS, Android. So eventually we're trying to hit them all. Um, so we'll get the game out to, and we're allowing people on the Kickstarter to choose what platform they want, but you know, we can't guarantee when they'll come out. So we, we just ask people to be patient and we'll, we'll let you guys know as soon as uh, we get close. Our goal is to launch though sometime in 2014. How much of the game would you say has been completed so far if you're hoping to release it still this year? We're actually pretty pretty far. We feel we're at alpha, and what alpha means is it's not ready for prime time and, and beta testing and, 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 and uh, getting people's feedback and, and iterating. So we uh, alpha means all the major systems are done. You know, all the core systems are there, and now we're just kind of flushing things out. So the big things that remain to do is we're adding the magic. So all the magic spells, you know, the magic systems were working, but now we're just adding all the rest of them and putting in the rest of the story missions. We're about halfway done with the, the stories, the implementing those in game. And then after that, um, we'll go into a, a closed beta period and just start start tuning the game and just making it as fun and as gauging as, pol uh, as possible, just polishing and polishing and polishing. And when people back the project, what different tiers can they get? Oh, we, we went a little overboard. <laughs> with our tiers. Um, we wanted to, to give as much variety, so um, we have some pure digital tiers, and then we have a lot of really cool swag, physical reward tiers, at least we think it's cool. Um, and so uh, it, it ranges from the lowest tier is $5, and then you get uh, the original soundtrack and a wallpaper, and the highest, obviously, is, is you know the granddaddy of them all. You have dinner with us, and we do a game game design session with you, right? And that electronic, these are actual physical music boxes with a spindle pinning, and so it plays uh, the, our main theme. We have, um, you can get a, a crystal, a crystal edition, and that's when your name goes into the game, into the monster pool, so you can be playing the game, and also you see a monster named after you, and you're like, oh, hello me, <laughs> kill, you know? Um, and to commemorate that, we, we, we actually get, get a crystal, and we inscribe your name on it. <laughs> nice. right? That's called the crystal edition. Of course, you can become an NPC, and if you become an NPC, not only does it look like you, but you can actually design the dialogue. So you can actually say, I mean, you can't add, do ads like, hey, buy Nike. But, you know, like, you can you can actually say whatever you want. You can do a shout out. You know, it just has to fit in the world, you know, a little bit, right? So you can, you can be an NPC. We can make a zombie that looks like you, obviously. That's a good one. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, you know, in the much higher tiers, you can get a, an oil painting. So... Uh, and, and hand-drawn illustrations done by Randis. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we got a lot, a lot of cool stuff. So I encourage people to uh, take a look, and if you can, you know, spare a couple dollars, and every every dollar helps. And uh, it really helps uh, support us and support indie devs, and helps us make a great game that you want to play.
Brilliant. And where can people go to find out more about Dragonfin Soup and Grim Brothers? Uh, go to dragonfinsoup.com. And there you can, it's our main uh, official webpage, and there you can see our Kickstarter and click on the little widget and it'll take you right there. You can uh, uh, check out, uh, once the Kickstarter completes, well, our forms will open up and uh, people can come in and participate. And you can also uh, just give us a shout out uh, on our Facebook or Twitter. Uh, you know, just, uh, they're all linked to that main site. So just come on over, say hi, and we'll say hi right back. We really want to get to know people. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ashmanif, for talking to us about your Kickstarter project, Dragonfin Absolutely. Soup. Absolutely. It's been brilliant. Thank you, James. I really appreciate you having me.